Welcome, everyone. That was a great uh, way to begin a time of worship as we come together. Thank you to each one of you who practiced and got ready for tonight. Thank you for your hard work. And we're going to have a great time together as uh, the kids of our Sunday school and the young people from our catechism classes will lead us. And as we sing songs together, as they read parts and scripture verses, we pray that this will encourage you and help you as you worship God. And especially as we get ready for Christmas Day, as we continue to wait for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So welcome everyone. Let's stand just for a moment, and I want to greet you in the Lord's name, and then there's lots of visitors here tonight, so you'll want to uh, greet them as well. Let's just stand and have God's greeting. Grace, mercy, peace be to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ through the working of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's greet one another and say hello. Make sure you know who's around you, please. Let's sing together, number 340, O come all ye faithful, and just the first verse, and then we'll do good Christian friends rejoice, the first and third. Let's sing together. Please be seated. I'd like to read from Psalm 98. Psalm 98. Psalm 
Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. This psalm uh, has a special name. Uh, it's in Latin, one of the languages I don't know, but it's called Cantante Domino, Sing Unto the Lord, okay? And in our gray uh, hymnal, uh, there are several songs which uh, we sing, uh, number 98. Uh, this is actually from the French Reformed Church. Uh, their uh, psalm writer, his name was uh, Louis Bourgeois, and he was, uh, if you still have a blue hymnal, you will see his name uh, with this hymn. It's actually from back in the, uh, this psalm, uh, back in the 1500s. So it's a very special psalm uh, that has been sung for a long time. And then uh, we have uh, a man by the name of Dewey Westra, and he is the one who uh, made some changes. You can see his name uh, down at the bottom of uh, number 98. And then uh, 174, uh, we have sing a new song to the Lord God. And then again, 175, another song uh, about Psalm 98. Now, Dewey Westra has had a hand in several of the psalms that have been written uh, that people could sing. And so it's become a very common hymn. I keep calling it a hymn, and it's a psalm. It's a psalm uh, that really uh, helps us understand uh, the joy that the Old Testament people had in the coming of the Lord. And now, uh, this man, Dr. Charles Spurgeon, uh, he wrote and uh, I understand people don't talk like this anymore, but anyway, uh, this is the, the way he wrote when after he had studied Psalm 98. Dr. Charles Spurgeon wrote, This sacred ode, which bears simply the title of a psalm, follows fitly on the last, the last psalm, and it's evidently an integral part of the series of royal psalms. The present psalm is kind of a coronation hymn, officially proclaiming the conquering Messiah as monarch over the nations. With blasts of trumpets, clapping of hands, and celebration of triumph. Well, that gets us closer, uh, I think. But I think Isaac Watts... Uh, the young man who was in the Church of England. And he said uh, that he didn't like the way they were singing a lot of the songs. They didn't, he didn't like a lot of the songs. So in his lifetime, he wrote 600 hymns and songs. And what he did was he put a... New Testament theme on the Psalms. 
So it would help Christians see how important it is to sing psalms. Not only because they were psalms, but because it was so important to sing the Bible uh, songs that David and the sons of Korah and all these other uh, people had written. So he went to work and he did all 150 psalms. He excluded a few because he said they didn't fit what he was trying to do. He was trying to give them all a New Testament theme. So what he saw in Psalm 98 was the coming of the Messiah. The coming of the Messiah. And what that would be like when Jesus Christ comes back to the earth. Now, of course, to understand uh, prophecy, the Old Testament prophets were given a view uh, what we would call the first coming of Jesus and then the second coming of Jesus all in one. Okay? So when you see some prophecy, they're talking about the first coming of Jesus and the second coming of Jesus. So this psalm writer, it's just listed as a psalm, talks about what happens on earth. And I was with the second, third, fourth, and fifth graders at the nursing home last week, and I talked to them about uh, why everyone is so quiet when we come together for worship. And they figured it out because it was so everyone can hear, right? So if kids, you know, are all over the place and they're screaming and shouting, we, the rest of us would have a hard time hearing, all right? That's why we try to be quiet for one another. So, but in this psalm, Psalm 98, it is an incredible psalm because it's when Jesus comes back and all of creation joins in to sing. Can you imagine if God would give a voice to all of creation? He just gave uh, just a few examples as we looked at in the psalm itself. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth burst into jubilant song with music, with trumpets and the blast of ram's horn. Shout for joy, the Lord the King, before the Lord the King. The sea resound, um, and if you've ever been to the ocean, you know how loud the ocean is. It can roar and pound against the, the shoreline. Well, what if God gave the ocean a, a mouth, an ability to uh, give praise to the Creator? How loud would that be? Or maybe it'd be simply just the way it is. The sea resound and everything in it. Think of all the animals that live in the ocean. All right? What about the rivers clap their hands? Wouldn't that be something? Well, you just read through all of this. The mountains sing together for joy. If all creation were given a voice and we could all shout and sing when the king returns, wouldn't that be an, an um, I hope we are able uh, to see the creation given a voice so we can understand it. It's going to be amazing when Jesus comes back, what the mountains will do, what the rivers will do, what the, all the animals in the forest, uh, whatever, and wherever the animals are, what are they going to be given so they can uh, join in praise uh, to the Messiah 
the king of all kings, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that's in the sea. So we have all of this. Now Isaac Watts was the guy. I think he'll help us understand why this psalm is so important. Because of all the songs that were written about Psalm 98, it's his song that captures us at Christmas. Now, he wrote it as a psalm. And everybody thought it was a psalm. But somehow, when it got to America, everybody thought it was a Christmas song. So we all started to sing it as a Christmas song, which we're going to do later tonight uh, in our uh, singing. You all know it, right? Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. Now you get it? Now do I get it? He wrote it because he understood when Jesus comes back, heaven is going to sing, earth is going to sing, and all of his creatures are going to sing. So what we're going to do tonight is practice. All right? For when Jesus comes back, you see all these songs, we look at the, the coming of Jesus the first time. But we can use them just like Isaac Watts did to think about Jesus coming the second time. Amen. Let's have a quick moment of prayer. Father, as we get ready to sing together, to read the Bible, to hear other verses uh, that are said, we pray that you would sink into our hearts through your Holy Spirit, your word that we will come alive and as we prepare our own hearts for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray for everyone here, all the kids, all the young people, all the moms and dads and uncles and aunts, grandpas and grandmas and great-grandpas and great-grandmas, Everybody that's here, all of our relatives and friends, may we all take this time to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
tidings of the same, how that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. O oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, O oh, tidings of comfort and joy. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren in her, is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be as you have said. Then the angel left, Luke 1, 26 through 38.
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Crinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee in Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting child. Luke 2, 1 through 5. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Luke 2, verses 6 and 7.
was born. O night divine, O night, O night By his cradle we stand. So led by light of a star sweetly gleaming, here came the wise man from the Orient land. The king of Kings lay fair in lowly manger in all our trials, born to be our friend. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voice. was born, O night divine, O night, O night
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in, wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. Luke 2, verses 8 through 14.
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what the angels had told them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told to them. Luke 2, 15 through 20.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judah, during the time of King Heron, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you in Bethlehem and the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people of Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent to them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went before them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, of incense, and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Matthew 2, 1 through 12.
I was given two announcements in that there are uh, things to uh, enjoy afterwards, some food that has been made and a little coffee. And also the deacons have prepared some uh, gifts for the kids, so that will be great. And uh, we had a great time together. And I'm sure the Lord, uh, as he uh, looks down into heaven, he enjoys the praises of children and laughs when everybody laughs. And even though parents turn red, uh, he enjoys it all. He's very used to it as he sees this all over the world. So receive God's parting blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Let's have a moment of prayer together. Father, as we get ready to go tonight and we go back to our homes, may this time that we've spent together, may you work in our hearts that there will be so much joy in anticipation that Jesus came the first time as a baby. But you, Lord Jesus, you're coming back, you're coming back again as the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And we say, Father, Holy Spirit, and Lord Jesus, come quickly. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a blessed holiday, Christmas season, and have a great time as we have fellowship together. Have a great evening.